So in, in Ezra chapter 9, verse 1, the Bible says, Now when these things were done, the princes came to me. So Ezra is speaking here, and he's saying the princes, those leaders of Israel came to him, saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the land, doing according to their abomination. So not only have they not separated themselves, but they were actually involved in the abominations of these people. And he goes on to tell us who these people were, even though the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. For they have taken up their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers have been chief in this trespass. So it's just not the laity, it's not just the average person, but the leaders of the land, rulers and chiefs, are doing wrong and they're leading others down the wrong path. Verse 3, when I heard this thing, I rent my garment and my mantle and plucked off the hair of my head and of my beard and sat down astonished. Then were assembled unto every one that trembled at the words of the God of Israel because of the transgression of those that had been carried away. And I said, astonished unto the evening sacrifice. And at the evening sacrifice, I arose from my heaviness. And having rent my garment and my mantle, I fell on my knees spread out my hands unto the Lord my God and said, oh my God, I am ashamed and blush to lift up my face to thee, my God, for our iniquities are increased over our head and our trespass is grown up unto the heavens. Let everybody say amen. amen. Come on again and just say amen. amen. Once again, I want to use for a subject today this time, will we do better? This time. Are y'all listening to this subject? This time, will we do better? For those of you who perhaps were not with us last Sunday, and I'm not going to go through all the details I gave last Sunday, but let me rehearse a few things. Ezra, the priest, the scribe, has recently led the second group of Jews from their exile down in Babylon. And Babylon had been taken over by the Persians. Uh, he, had just, he had just brought in a second group that God had allowed to come back to their homeland for 70 years. Let me say 70 years. For 70 years, these people have been in exile, had been captives in a strong, in a strange land. Y'all can remember back it's in the book of Psalms when the, the people, their captives, captors, uh, told them, sing us some of the songs of Zion. And they were so heartbroken of uh, being away from home, they said, how can we sing in a strange land? Well, the good news is God had allowed them to come home. And at this point, they had started rebuilding the city of Jerusalem, more importantly. Uh, they had started rebuilding the temple of God. But after returning home, they went right back to the same thing that got them in trouble before. God had given them in the law that they were not to intermingle, they were not to uh, have intermarriages, that is to marry people from the land of Canaan because God knew that if they gave their sons to the daughters of these pagan nations and if they gave their daughters to the men of, the, of, of these pagan nations that these folks would have turned their hearts from following God. And that they would begin to worship idol gods. Did somebody say amen? amen. And so I, I talked about the fact, and I will repeat uh, this particular scripture. If you have your Bibles, 
I did read this last Sunday, but I want to begin at this point. If you have your Bibles, go to 2 Chronicles chapter 36 and verse 14. Go there quickly, 2 Chronicles. And many of you all carry now the cell phone and iPad, so you can find it real quick. 2 Chronicles chapter 36 and verse 14. And I want you to look at what uh, the Lord said about Israel. And what the Lord tried to do for Israel before they went into exile, before God allowed this punishment to come upon them. In 2 Chronicles 36 and 14, the Bible says, Moreover, all the chief of the priests and the people transgressed very much after all the abominations of the heathen and polluted the house of the Lord which he had hollowed in Jerusalem. So God is saying here, the writer is speaking for the Lord and saying that the people transgressed. They were looking at the other folks. They were looking at the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hittites, the Amorites. And I'm wondering today, uh, in today's church world, who are we looking at? Are we looking toward heaven? Are we keeping our eyes on Jesus? Or are we looking at the folks? Oh, come on, y'all. Y'all gonna help me today. Somebody say amen. amen. I better yet, why don't you lift your hands and just say, Lord, have your way. Lord, come on, everybody say, Lord, have your way. Lord, yes, they were looking at the other folks. And in the very next verse, Verse 15, this is what the Bible says, and the Lord God of their fathers sent by sent them by his messengers. In other words, God sent prophets. He sent uh, the teaching priests and, 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 and he sent them to give what? A warning. Look at that verse again. And the Lord God of their fathers sent them by his messengers. Rising up be times, meaning he sent them early and sending Look at this. Because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. How many of you all, not, I, I, I'm pretty sure I asked this question last Sunday, but how many of you all are glad that we serve a compassionate God? Amen. Even when we have not measured up to where we ought to be. Because let, let's face the fact, since we have been saved, Many of us have had some situations where we have not measured up to where we ought to be. Oh, come on, y'all. Because there have been times when we should have been prayer warning. We should have been praying. We didn't pray like we should have. We, we, we stopped fasting. Come on. Y'all help me. I, I, I know we're small in numbers. But that's the way it's going to be. But I need to hear y'all say amen sometimes. Oh, yeah. And, and then, then the Lord may have given it to us to go and to give a word to our neighbor, to our co-worker, and we were uh, ashamed or we were a little afraid, but we know that it was the voice of the Lord who spoke to us. Amen. And we didn't do what God told us to do. Come on, y'all. And, and, and God is compassionate today, because I, I know I talked about this last Sunday, because we, some of us know we become slow, unfaithful. You know, it's quite interesting that we want to come to church now. Uh, but before the pandemic, many of us did not come to church as we should. I'm not pointing the finger at anybody here. Come on, y'all. We, we, we got to be real about this thing. And so I'm, I'm preaching not only to the folks here, but the folks that are on Facebook and Zoom. Amen. We did not do what God Warned us to do, but God still showed his compassion toward us. But look at what they did back in, 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 in the time before the exile. The, the Bible said, but they mocked the messengers of God. They, they made fun of the preachers. And I gave an example about Jeremiah and despised his word, despised what the preacher said, misused his prophecy until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people. Till there was no remedy. And, and I got to go back to that scripture because that last part, mm -hmm. 
really sticks out to me. Till there was no remedy. And I wonder what does God see in us today? What does he see in living of the valley? What does he see in the church of God in Christ? What does he see in all of these other churches? Is there a remedy? Is there hope? And, I, and you say, preacher, you, you say God, you told us that God can do anything. And he can, but you are a free moral agent. Which means that God gives you the power of choice. And, and when you decide to keep doing what you want to do, and the heart becomes hardened. And, and listen, God has been dealing with me more and more in this time about people's hearts becoming hardened. You know, if you think about the physical heart, if, if the blood is not flowing through that physical heart correctly and it's got too much calcium, then the valves of your heart will become hardened and your heart will shut down. Well, the heart that, 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 that I'm referring to now and the scripture referred to is the seat of your personality. It is within your soul. It is within your will, whether you accept God or not. And the longer you go, I hope y'all listen to me. I want y'all to listen to me. The longer you go in rejecting God, the harder your heart becomes. Yeah. Listen to me, young people. Listen to me. Because this is a serious matter. And some of y'all don't really, don't really understand this. But any kind of way, we're in a pandemic. The folks are rioting. Come on, y'all. I know there may not be so much riot, rising in Greenville, Mississippi, but it could spill over here one day. The folks are literally tearing up Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington. Y'all come on, say amen. amen. And nothing seems to be changing. And now we're in a political season. And, 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 and this thing about electing a new president, look at the choices we have. We don't have much of a choice. Right. What, I, what, I, what I'm saying is neither one of these candidates really deserve to be president. Amen. Right. Say amen. amen. Come on, say amen. amen. And so what I'm trying to get you to see is all of this is really pointing to the return of Jesus. And who knows what's getting ready to happen. Will you lift your hand and tell God, thank you. Come on, I want you to do a little better. Come on and tell God, thank you. Now, I, I want you to look at what the word of the Lord is, is saying here. Because the children of Israel, and, 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 I, and I'm going to stick with my time limit basically here. The, 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 the children of Israel, they were not to intermingle. They were not to enter, have the intermarriages. They when they went into the land of Canaan, they were to be an example and a pattern of how to live a life that pleased God. But what happened? Instead of them doing the drawing, they let the world draw them. Amen. Now I want y'all to understand something. That, that, that God has always been a merciful God. Are y'all listening to me? I say God has always been a merciful God. Because you can remember that when Moses got ready to lead the folks into the promised land many, many years before this text, that he gave to Moses the order that once you go into the land of Canaan, you are to wipe out these folks or at least drive them out of the land. That's what, what, what uh, God told Moses. And that seemed harsh that they were to kill the people. Amen. Show no mercy on the people. But see, what you may not have understood, that God had already shown his mercy to these people. As a matter of fact, 
If you go all the way back to Abraham's day, he sent Abraham into the land. And Abraham was to be an example to the folks who were living in the land of Canaan. And guess what? He was an example. Come on, say amen. amen. They were a wicked people, but, but God in his mercy, in his justice, he did not destroy them immediately. I'm talking about the people of Canaan. You know, God will give you a warning. Am I right about that? God will give you one. Come on, y'all, listen to me, young folks, because God is giving warnings right now. God will give a warning, and he gave the warning. He let them see Abraham live there, and how Abraham honored the God of heaven, how Abraham made sacrifices to the God of heaven, how Abraham did not participate in the abominations and the, the wickedness of the people. Matter of fact, before God uh, destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, you can remember the story in Genesis chapter 18, there were three visitors who, who, who uh, visited Abraham. And, 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 and I don't know we come to think that these were angels, but one of them was the Lord himself. The other two were probably angels. And, and as, as they were departing from uh, Abraham's tent, uh, the Lord asked the question. He, and the question was, shall I hide from Abraham the thing which I do? Shall I hide the fact that I'm about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? Listen to what he said. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and, and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Listen to what, what the Lord said. For I know him. Oh, is it good with God to say, I know the person. In other words, I, I, I know what's in Abraham. I know what type of person Abraham is. I know him that he would command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord. Abraham was a man of faith. He was a righteous man. He taught Isaac what was right. Isaac was going to teach his children. Come on. And Jacob would teach his children. Today's Sunday school lesson about Joseph. Come on, say amen, everybody. Amen. Come on, everybody, say amen. amen. And what he was saying, that I, I, Abraham is living in the land. He is an example for the, for the folk. And this is, what I, this is the point I really want to make right now. Can God look at you and say that you are an example to the people of the world today? God needs somebody. God needs a man. God need a woman who will live holy, who will, amen, be 100%, amen, following the ways of the Lord. Come on, y'all. You ought to follow. I guess the granddad is going to help me preach, but she will sit back there. But you, you ought to follow him so until the world can see Jesus in you. They ought to see him in the way you talk. Come on. And I'm going to do a little teaching here. And when I talk about in the way that he, that you talk, uh, every believer knows that it's wrong to use profanity. Uh, maybe I need to say it again because a whole lot of folks say, I've been born again, but they're using a lot of bad words. Amen. Come on, y'all. But it's not only the fact that we don't use profanity. There's some other things. Vulgar talk. Men, uh, when a woman passed by her, won't be talking all on her clothes. I put it that way. Y'all say amen. Come on, say amen. Telling the wrong kind of jokes. Foolish talking. There ought to be a difference in the way you talk. There ought to be a difference in the way you look. Different the way you act. Say amen. Because the love of God ought to, ought to be shown in your life. You want to be an example of the God that you follow. So here's a question. Can God depend on you to be a living example of righteousness to the people, the people today? Paul told the Philippian church that they were to be blameless and harmless 
The songs of rebuke, the, I'm sorry, the songs of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world. God gave the Canaanites an example in Abraham. And it kind of ties into the Sunday school lesson. Because he told Abraham, now listen, your people, uh, they're going to be taken out of this land. They're going to be taken out of this land for four generations. Moses was the fourth generation. All right? You, we studied in Sunday school how Joseph ended up in Egypt. And, and while, he's in, while he's in Egypt, he's exalted to be the second highest ruler of Egypt. And eventually, Jacob and, and what, 70 more people will go into Egypt. And they're absent out of the land of Canaan. But Joseph told him, said, when y'all leave, he said, one day God is going to visit you. And when you leave, don't leave my bones in Egypt. Take me with you. And you know what? God did just that. That's when Moses comes up. But here's the part I want to make is this. Is this during those four generations, uh, coming, going all the way back to Abraham, 400 years approximately, God was giving the Canaanites a chance to get right. But instead of getting right, they got worse. And you know what happened? Because they got worse, God sends Joshua and the people into Canaan. And the, and the command was to destroy these people because of their weakening. But instead of destroying these folks and driving them out, they became friends with wicked folks. Folks that committed abomination. I talked about what they did. They, they, they killed their own babies, burn them alive as a sacrifice to the God. They did all kinds of sexual acts on top of heels as a form of worship to idol God. They got so low until they practiced not only homosexuality and lesbianism, but they practiced what you call the bestiality. Some people pronounce it bestiality, but it's actually bestiality. In other words, they were having a relationship with animals. That's how corrupt they had become. And I wonder now, what does God, I preach this message with, what does God think about me? Or let's apply it this way, what does God think about the church today? Have we honored God? Have we kept ourselves unspotted from the world? Have we lived the type of life that God wants to live today? Why don't you just lift your hand and say, Lord, have your way. Oh, I believe you can do better than again. Come on, lift your hand. And everybody, come on, shout it out. Lord, have your way. Listen, we as the church, and I want to be close in a few minutes. Let's not get caught up with the ideas and the ways of this world. Listen, church, we cannot, we cannot, we cannot be politically correct. Because to be politically correct would, would cause you to go in a direction that is against the word of God. I told this pastor, and I'm going to say it again, that I, this coming political season, I will not tell you who to vote for. But what I did tell you to do is to pray that God would be involved, that he intervene, and the person he desires wins his office. Come on, everybody. Y'all say amen. amen. But we cannot, we cannot uh, 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 be politically, politically correct. We, we must take a stand against sin. Even though it is not politically correct. Listen, I got to mention this while I close. Even though it is not politically correct, we must continue to preach against abortions. The Bible says in Proverbs 31 and 8, open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such as are pointed to destruction. Now that's the King James Version, but let me clear it up and put it in more English translation that simply said, speak up for those who cannot speak up for themselves. Ensure justice for those who are perishing, who are dying, the baby 
that's in the womb that is sucking his or her thumb that's kicking. Amen. And moving and jumping. That is a live creature. That is a baby. Not just a fetus. Not just something that is there. But he cannot or she cannot speak. But the church must preach Amen. The gospel to let a world know that God is not pleased with abortion. All we're simply doing, you all, is doing like the people did back these heathen nations did when, when Israel was there. They offered their babies to the idol God by burning them. What folks are doing now, they're sacrificing these babies for pleasure. The pleasure in the bedroom. Yeah. Come on, y'all. And the baby materialized and they kill the baby. Who you think is pleased? God is not pleased. But the devil is pleased. Say amen, somebody. Come on, say amen. amen. And, and, and listen, listen. Uh, uh, some of this is because of the love of money. Planned Parenthood. All about money. They take the the aborted fetus yes, yes. and sell it to yes. scientists. It's a million dollar business, y'all. Come on, y'all. The Bible says the love of money is what? The root of all evil. But my point is here. I think that we're going to have to take a more active approach to preach against this sin. We cannot be quiet, y'all. Are y'all with me? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I believe that if we preach more about it, more souls will be saved. And if more souls are saved, more people will have the knowledge yes, that killing babies is wrong. Somebody tell God thank you. Somebody tell God thank you. Oh, I, 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 I'm trying, and I'm kind of rushing here. My time is really up. But, 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 but the people, the read God, let them go into exile 70 years is because they look at the other folks they did what God told them not to do. And it cut off God's blessing. And I'm looking at the church now. I, I, I'm looking, y'all. I'm looking. I'm looking at the church world. I'm looking at where we are and what we had and what we lost. You see, the church is supposed to be spirit feeding. Come on, y'all. The church is supposed to be spirit led. Because our battle against the devil is a spiritual war. Bullets and samurai said, bullets and gun won't do. Money won't do. Why don't you tell God thank you? But, but you need the Holy Ghost. And you need power to fight the devil. Why don't you tell God thank you? Thank you Lift your hand and tell God thank you. Thank you and and, and when, I'm, when I'm speaking about Holy Ghost power, I told you the other day, I'm not speaking about singing, shouting, and dancing. But we need power to drown the devil away. We need power to cast him out. Come on and tell him thank you. And it will spirit feel, and it will spirit led. Then we will enjoy the gifts of the spirit. We need a word of knowledge. We need a word of wisdom. We need to be able to prophesy. We need to be able to discern spirits. Why don't you tell him thank you? We need. We of tongues. You see, you see, God want to move among the people. God won't, won't, won't church folk to be prayer warriors so that our children can come to him. So that our aunts and uncles will get saved. So that our neighbors will get saved. And I, I got the globe of Little of the Valley. We got to do more than shout. Uh, we got to do more than sing. Uh, 
when we come to church, we ought to bring the Holy Ghost with us. And when we get here and begin to pray, the presence of the Lord ought to be mighty to hear. And if his presence is great in the room, somebody ought to lift their hand and say, Lord, I want to be saved. Lord, I want to be delivered. We need God's presence to be in this place, to be in your homes. Until when people come who don't know the Lord, they can feel this presence and know there is something different and know that I I need to give my heart I need to give my soul to the Lord God is waiting on somebody to rise up God is waiting on somebody to be a Moses somebody to be a Daniel somebody to be one of the three you be born if we will live right, if we will seek the Lord, when the devil rises up, it won't matter that he calls us to go into the fire of furnace. Because if we have power, when we go in the furnace, the Lord will go in with us. The Lord will deliver, will bring us out. And then there ought to be a testimony that God is able. If God did it for you, He'll do it for me. Shout yes! Look at that and shout yes. Hallelujah. Come on and shout hallelujah. Come on and shout hallelujah. to but in this pandemic we try to limit our services a little bit my God my God but what I'm telling you is that God is calling us to go higher are y'all hearing what I'm saying could it not be and I spoke in these terms last Sunday could it not be that we are experiencing Exile. Y'all listen to what I'm saying? Could it not be that we're experiencing an exile? The church is shut down. And although we are here today, we're, we're, we're few in number today. I don't think we hardly have 25% of the membership here now. Many folks are at home. So if you really look at it, we still are not quite out of the Maybe we're at the point the Lord spoke to me this morning and said, well, maybe we're like, you know, when they came out of exile, there were three different groups that came. They didn't fully come out all of a sudden. And that period of the three groups, Ezra was the second. Uh, led the second group. Nehemiah led the third. But it was over a period of probably 70 to 100 years before the last exile. It didn't happen all of a sudden. And, and what I'm saying, and, and, and listen, I want you to understand something here. I don't know what God is going to do. It is my prayer, Lord, restore us. Lord, let us come back to the church as we should. But God knows what he's doing. I, I, don't, understand, I don't understand everything that God does. But could it be that God is trying to teach us a lesson trying to stir up our hunger for righteousness, trying to increase our appetite. Come on, are y'all hearing what I'm saying here? Because on the minds of most people, they want to go back to church. But we don't really know what to do about this pandemic. Come on, y'all. Y'all say it. Amen. And so, to you who are here and you that are listening, through Facebook and Zoom, let's really begin to seek 